your aortic insufficiency is a common disease that is affecting up to 3% of patients above the age of 70 years. And many of those patients are not being seen as candidate for surgical correction, either because of significant burden of morbidities as well as um, the overall advanced level of frailty that prohibit them from undergoing surgical aortic valve replacement. Hello everyone, this is NSL Harvey. I'm an internal medicine resident at West Virginia University um, here in Morgantown, West Virginia. Today I'm going to talk about our recent paper, uh, Transcatheter Aortic Valve Replacement in Patient with Pure Aortic Insufficiency that will be published at May Clinic Proceeding in December 2020. So our paper is um, trying to answer the question about the the feasibility and the outcomes of TAVR in patients with pure aortic insufficiency. And we believe our question is very important. We know from prior literature that patients with, with this condition, if left untreated, they have overall very poor prognosis with only around 25% will be still alive after five years of diagnosis. And uh, we know also from prior literature that only 3% of patients with significant advanced disease undergo surgery if they have an ejection fraction of less than 30%. And this percentage increases a little bit to 22% if they have an ejection fraction of less than 50%, with the vast majority of patients are being denied surgical correction. So here in our study, we are just trying to shed some light on a possible alternative approach, which is TAVR in this case. So in our study, we found around 915 patients who meet the criteria for pure aortic insufficiency who underwent TAVR between 2016 and 2017 which is a relatively good number of patients since the procedure is only being used as an inflatable uh, in patients who are not being seen as candidate for surgical correction. And then we compared those patients to a similar group who underwent SAVR for the same indication and we compared the inpatient outcomes between the two groups. And the major um, primary outcomes of our study did not find uh, any differences in inpatient mortality between the two groups, despite the significant disadvantage of patients uh, who were in the TAVR group in terms of uh, being significantly older and having significant disease morbidities uh, in terms of um, congestive heart failure, diabetes, hypertension, among others. But again, there was no differences in inpatient mortality between the two groups. And moreover, patients who underwent TAVR had actually um, shorter course uh, of hospitalization compared to the SAVR group, as well as patients who underwent TAVR um, were more likely to be discharged home compared to the SAVR group as well. The TAVR group also had more favorable outcomes in terms of um, having um, less likely to develop pneumonia, less likely to develop acute kidney injury, as well as post-operative um, respiratory complication compared to the cyber group. However, the cyber group had more favorable outcomes in terms of the need for permanent pacemaker placement. So our study here um, was very similar in outcomes compared to the prior observational studies in terms of uh, suggesting that TAVR might be an appropriate alternative in patients with severe, severe significant disease who are not being seen as surgical candidate. Um, because uh, as I stated earlier, uh, patients with significant disease are most likely not being offered the surgical correction they are in need of. Finally, um, although our paper showed um, new findings uh, in patients with uh, pure aortic insufficiency who underwent TAVR, it's still uh, an observational study and no guidelines can be made out of observational studies. So we hope that our uh, paper will be the ground for the next uh, researches uh, 
that will hopefully include randomized control trial in this particular group of patients uh, in order to establish um, the feasibility as well as the outcomes uh, in terms of short-term and long-term outcomes in this particular group of patients. Um, and we hope that um, um, a significant number of those patients who are, who are in need of this procedure um, will, will, will have it um, um, if they do not meet uh, the criteria for surgical correction. We hope you found this presentation from the content of our website valuable. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you are interested in more information about us, our homepage is www.mayoclinicproceedings.org. There you'll find access to information for our social media content, such as additional videos on our YouTube channel or journal updates on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter. More information about Healthcare at Mayo Clinic is available at www.mayoclinic.org. This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.